Hello, this is John from kvrprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on constructors in Java. So I've got a main method set up here already and I'm going to create a, I'm going to add a new class here in the same file just to keep things simple, which I will call machine. Now a constructor is a special method which is run every time you create an instance of your class. So down here, let's go ahead and I'll create an instance of this class. I'll say, I'll create a variable to refer to it. And I'll set it equal to a new machine like this. And it's the new machine bit here that's the important bit because that's where the um, new instance is actually created of this class. That's where we actually create an object. So now um, to machine, I'm going to add a method. I'll make it a public method. And um, it's not going to have a return type. So usually a method has to have a return type, even if it's void. But a constructor um, uniquely doesn't have any return type. And the name of your constructor always has to be the same as the name of your class. So this is going to be a machine in this case. Um, normally a um, method has a lowercase letter at the start, but because your constructor has to have the same name as your class, it's, of course, going to be an uppercase letter. So I'll, I'll add a sysout here, um, just so that we can see it's doing something. Um, constructor running, like this. And now I can go ahead and run this program. So if I run that, um, we get this output here. So just the fact that I'm doing new machine is causing the constructor to run automatically, which is the whole point of it. Now, uh, something that you often use constructors for um, is initialization of instance variables, for example. So let's say we've got um, a private string name for my machine here. I could use the constructor to set a, a default value for that name. So I could say name equals um, Arnie, for example. And because this constructor runs every time an object is created, I know that my objects will all have, um, will all have this initialization running. So they'll all have name initially set to Arnie in this case. And just to um, underline the fact that it's, um, it's really the new machine bit. It's really the new that calls the constructor. I, I don't even need, usually when you do new, you create a variable and set it equal to the object that's returned. But um, you could just type new and your class name by itself with round brackets after it. And that in itself will create a new object. And if I run this, you can see that it will run the constructor a second time here. So this is the important bit for invoking the constructor. One um, thing that you often want to do is to have multiple constructors because um, just as a method can take parameters, so can a constructor. And in the same way that actually you can have, you can have um, different methods with the same name. And as long as you've got different parameters to the method, then it's okay. And Java will figure out which method to call when you actually call it. So you could think of this here as being a bit like a call to the constructor. And you see we've got a place here where we could put some parameters. And um, this is looking for a constructor that accepts no parameters. So it's running this constructor. But let's go ahead and add a constructor that accepts a string parameter like this. And this could work um, just like a set method. I could say this dot name equals name. So this dot name means um, the instance variable up here and name by itself means the local variable here. So I'm just setting this, um, setting this equal to what we pass in. And to pass something in, but first I'll actually, I'll add a um, sysout so we can see it running. And I'll say second constructor running. And if I just run that as it is, um, I'm only going to get the first constructor, which is being run here. But let's add a call to the second constructor. I'll say machine, machine2 equals new machine. And this time I'll pass in a string, which I'll set equal to Bertie. So if I run this, it's going to look for the constructor that, 
that accepts a string and it's going to find it here and it's going to run this one. So when I run that, so this code runs my first constructor and this code here where I pass in a string runs the second constructor because that accepts the string. Let's just bung in one more for the fun of it. Supposing um, I give this a private int code like that, so every machine has a name and a code. I could have um, yet another constructor that accepts also a name, um, but it also accepts a code. And I can say this dot name equals name, just like in a set method which we've covered previously, and this dot code equals code. And to invoke that, um, let's have a machine three equals new machine and um, I'm going to pass in a name um, chalky let's say and I'll give it code 7 so um, and see that running sysout what I think I hit my um, laptop um, finger pad thing whatever you call it I can't remember okay so um, and I'll say third constructor running. So if I run that, then that will run the third constructor just because of this line here. So you can see that Java is automatically selecting the right constructor depending on the parameter list. Um, probably a final thing that I should mention about constructors is um, sometimes you want to call a constructor from within another constructor. So one possibility is that all the um, more complex constructors could call the simpler ones. Like, um, for example, maybe I, I've got some code in here, some kind of initialization that I want to always run in every constructor, and I want to always call this constructor from within the more complex ones. Or another possibility, which I'll demonstrate here, is um, you might want to use the most complex constructor in all of the simpler ones. So um, let's say, for example, here, here I'm initializing the name to Arnie, and I probably also want to initialize the code to some default value. And you'd think that you could do that by writing machine Arnie, and let's give it a default code of um, zero. So what I'm attempting to do there is to invoke this constructor here, which has the name machine, so I'm calling it like a method. But that doesn't actually work. And the one change you have to, um, well, there's two changes you have to make to get it to work. Firstly, change, change the constructor name to this. And um, I won't worry too much about that. That's the second use of this we've seen in this series of tutorials. The other one is this thing here to differentiate between an instance variable and a local variable. Here I'm using this to call a constructor. And that's all there is to it. It might look complex because it's a strange word to use but it, it just means call the constructor that accepts these particular parameters. And if you wanted to call um, the default constructor with no parameters, it would look like that. You just have no parameters um, there after it. But here I want to call the one with two parameters. And the other, the other thing I need to do to get this to work is a call to a constructor needs to be the first line in the constructor way of calling it. So I need to put it right at the top there. And I could have that in the second constructor as, well, constructor as well and say this. In this case, I'll initialize with name. Again, I'll give it a default code of zero. And then um, this third constructor, of course, isn't going to call, isn't going to do this because that will be calling itself, which would be an infinite recursive loop, which wouldn't be good. So that all works. And um, this, this might look a bit puzzling because you have to bear in mind that, let's say, for example, um, you just call the first constructor in your code by a running new machine. And what's going to happen is it's going to go straight into this code here. And the first line of that is calling the third constructor here. So it says third constructor running um, down here. And then after that, it gets on to its own code and says constructor running like that. So um, that's that for constructors. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to cover probably static variables and static methods. So um, join me again um, for that. And until then, happy coding.